So this is the data on uh, liking school. So uh, girls are red, boys are blue. Yeah, uh, pointer. No. no. Okay, so boys, uh, boys are red, girl, uh, boys are blue, girls red, and it goes from the first year of uh, middle school till till the last year. That's uh, the fourth year. Uh, so this, the first, uh, the um, the bold line shows those who uh, like school a lot. Mm. So what we see uh, is that there is a, a, a strong decline of liking school. Uh, as uh, they stay in middle school and and the strongest decline is uh, after one year in middle school and we will see that this is really typical <coughs> of France and you see as well uh, the difference between boys and girls uh, in the sense as you'd expect that girls like uh, more uh, more girls like school than boys if we now compare France with other, with other countries and the overall picture as you see it is that there is a significant decrease in liking schools in all of the countries. See the bars are getting smaller. Um, there are gender differences in all the countries. In all countries you see red bars are bigger than blue bars. And there is no association, you need to trust me, between uh, uh, family affluence and uh, liking school. So where is France? France is here and what you see there is a strange uh, pattern in France where there is a strong decrease between 11 and, and uh, 13 years old and then it goes better as the relative position of France compared to the other countries. While in other countries like this at the bottom is Finland they never like school, <laughs> right? At the top is Armenia, they always like school. So they, they stay in their, their same position compared to the other. Other countries are, have, uh, have other patterns. So this is Germany, this is Spain, and th this is the UK. They, they posi their position compared to the other country is uh, uh, worsen as the kids uh, uh, progress in, in, uh, in school. So, so there are different patterns and, and uh, <coughs> that lead to changing uh, relative position of countries. But France has this special thing mm -hmm. about something is happening in middle school in France and kids uh, uh, are not uh, so well in the middle school in France. If we look at school pressure, we see again an overall pattern that school pressure rises as kids uh, grow older, which is what you'd expect. And you see that at age 11, the girls and boys are, are the same, rela rela um, uh, if we talk about school pressure. But as girls grow older, they, they experience more school pressure than boys, much more. So France is relatively low in, in the, compared to other countries, mm -hmm. which is kind of par paradoxical because mm -hmm. with the emphasis on school in the French system, you'd expect they would be stressed, but they are not mm -hmm. so much. While in the UK, you see that they are already quite stressed when they are younger, and really as they progress in their school system, the, the, the kids from the UK become one of the most stressed compared to the, to the other students. So something is happening as well in the UK system that maybe the UK people can uh, explain us. Uh, I wanted to, to present some data about bullying as we have seen in the previous presentation that it is strongly linked to, to well-being uh, at school. So this is uh, the majority of uh, children in France are not have nothing to do with bullying. So eight out of ten are not uh, involved in bullying, which is good news. Uh, then we have those are in blue, twelve percent of victims of bullying, and then we have nine percent of bullies. And then we have 3% of bully victims, which is a very vulnerable, vulnerable group. 
and uh, I bet their well-being is is uh, really uh, affected by by uh, uh, being caught in uh, in uh, this uh, toxic uh, relationship with the others. <coughs> Maybe then uh, Michal uh, can later talk about that because she's a real expert in uh, uh, school bullying. So anyway, so that's that's the case in France. So what is really interesting and good news, I would say. So this is the relative position of, of France regarding bullying uh, at age 11 in this part of, of the graph and at age 15. And I presented in this graph the data of 2010 and the data of 2014 at 11 and at 15. And what we see is that the relative position of France compared to the other countries has improved and for the first time there was a national campaign in France against uh, bullying mm. and what this shows is that uh, not only did bullying improved in France after this campaign as we could measure it with HBSC so we could measure it within the country but the if the but it had an effect a relative effect in France c with uh, compared to the other countries so that we, we really got um, better which is good news because it was the first time there was a really massive coherent program against bullying in France so now uh, um, a few slides uh, uh, showing the links between school and health among the French uh, students so, um, uh, in this graph, just uh, a summary of the links between uh, um, liking school. So, liking if you do not like school at all, you're purple. If you are in in the middle, you're 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 green. And if you like school a lot, you are blue. So, if perceived your health as excellent is higher, significant, significantly higher among those who like school a lot. It is a, a higher country score is higher among those who like school a lot. Uh, they have less um, uh, health complaints and uh, kids who like school a lot have a lower risk of uh, depressivity. So all goes in, in the same direction. If you like school, it is linked to uh, perceiving your health as better. I'm not saying, that it's, this is not causal, right? It's an association. Uh, we now looked uh, at, uh, we, we did a model to see um, what could explain in, in with the indicators we have uh, in-house what could explain low life satisfaction among our students, uh, taking into account gender, because we have seen gender has a strong influence on, on life satisfaction, grade, because we have seen age as a strong impact, and uh, taking into account uh, family affluence, as we have seen it has as well a strong impact on life satisfaction. And then we put in there the uh, school indicators we have. And what did we find? That the strongest uh, indicator linked to low life satisfaction is liking school. In the expecting direction, those who do not like school have higher risk to report a low life satisfaction. Again, uh, everything taking, taken into account, uh, those who are much stressed uh, by school uh, are, have a lower life satisfaction and those who, uh, whose results are below the means have a, a low life satisfaction, even if, for example, they like school, right? This is, this is a logistic regression where everything else than the one that you're talking about is, is, is the same. And of course, uh, even when you take into account all those uh, school-related indicators, there is still an effect of uh, family affluence. Uh, 